tonight claims as many as 40 Ukrainian prisoners of war may have been killed when their jail was shelled. Russia accusing Ukraine of hitting it with US-made HIMAR rockets. But Ukraine denies it struck the prison in Olenivka, accusing Russia of deliberately shelling it and murdering the prisoners to then blame Ukraine. The attack overshadowing plans to restart vital grain exports from Ukraine after a UN-backed agreement involving Moscow and Kyiv. President Volodymyr Zelensky has made an unannounced appearance in a port in the Odessa region ahead of the departure of the first ship loaded with grain since the war with Russia began five months ago. He told Western ambassadors that Ukraine was ready to export its grain. It was just waiting for the go-ahead from its partners. It's important for us, he added, to remain the guarantor of global food security. Meanwhile, Lloyds of London has agreed to provide critical marine cargo and war insurance. Today's operation is a test to see if the recent deal struck in Istanbul works in practice, given that the coastal waters have been mined by Ukraine and blockaded by Russian warships. Police have arrested 65 suspects and fatally shot two during a multidisciplinary operation in Krugersdorp in Gauteng. This followed the rape of eight women on the set of a music video at an unused mine in West Village. The police say the film crew of 22 people were accosted by a group of armed men who ordered them to lie down and proceeded to rape eight of the women before robbing the crew of their belongings. The area where the crimes took place is known to be frequented by illegal miners and many of the suspects are believed to be foreign nationals. Police have dismantled a sophisticated bikey ring trafficking drugs and laundering money across the Queensland New South Wales border. More than 60 people arrested and millions of dollars worth of drugs, cash and guns seized across the two week operation. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Operation Viking in full force. Organised crime detectives kicking down doors and taking in bikies one by one. Police, search warrant, open the door! Through a trap door in Balambal Heights, just south of the border, they find the hidden clubhouse of the Mongols' Tweed Coast chapter. Police, search warrant! A large-scale marijuana lab uncovered inside a suburban home in Carrara and a clandestine meth lab hidden in Grafton. The 12 day bikey blitz involved hundreds of specialist officers from Queensland, New South Wales, and the AFP, raiding at least 40 homes and businesses, leading to the arrest of 67 bikies and their alleged criminal associates on a total of 212 serious charges. Police seizing $4.5 million worth of drugs, including ice, marijuana, GHB, and cocaine. 20 weapons and hundreds of thousands of dollars cash, plus designer watches, as well as luxury cars including a Porsche, Ferrari and Lamborghini at Hope Island. A court in the U.S. decided Commander Khalifa Haftar was liable for war crimes for extrajudicial killings and torture in Libya. Several Libyan families claim the chief of the eastern-based Libyan National Army is responsible for the bombing and torture of their relatives. Virginia's federal judge said Aftar was convicted since he hadn't cooperated with the justice. She added the senior field marshal could go on appeal and more court hearings were necessary to determine the compensation amounts. The families filed their lawsuit under the 1991 U.S. law, the Torture Victim Protection Act, which allows all citizens in the world to press charges on someone who, acting in an official capacity for a foreign nation, has committed acts of torture and or extrajudicial killing. America's ban on assault weapons is expired in 2004. A bill that advanced in Congress today would bring it back.
The House narrowly passed the bill, 217 to 213. Two Republicans voted for the measure. Five Democrats voted against it. That almost even split suggests the measure might not survive the Senate. All 50 Democrats would need 10 Republicans to help pass it. Last month, President Biden signed the nation's first major gun bill in 30 years. Among other things, it funds mental health programs, supports red flag laws, and targets domestic violence between unmarried partners, the so-called boyfriend loophole. Colombian superstar Shakira could face up to eight years in prison. That's what a Spanish prosecutor is seeking over a 14.5 million euro tax fraud case. The singer, who has sold more than 80 million records worldwide with hits like Hips Don't Lie, rejected a settlement offer from the prosecutor's office to close the case earlier this week. The terms of the settlement offer have not been disclosed. Shakira is accused of failing to pay taxes between 2012 and 2014. She says she did not live in Spain during that time. The information revealed in a prosecutor's document, seen by Reuters, argues that Shakira did live in Spain between 2012 and 2014, and in May 2012 bought a family home in Barcelona. There is no part of me that thinks that was the right way to behave in that moment. Actor Will Smith said on Friday he was deeply remorseful for having slapped Chris Rock at the Academy Awards this year. I've reached out to Chris um, and the, mes the message that came back is that uh, he's not ready to talk and when he is, he will reach out. Um, so I will, I will say to you, um, Chris, I apologize to you. Uh, my behavior was unacceptable and I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. 